Once again, we have the pleasure to meet with Jim Zetterquest, who's a local historian, to tell us a little bit about the history of religion in Willow Glen. Jim, welcome. Thanks, Gavin. It's great to be back. So, you know, we've been talking to a lot of different uh, religious organizations, and they've had a significant impact on our community. But I'd like to run back and see, you know, how far does religion go back in Willow Glen? Well, we can go back over 7,000 years with the Taming Indians here. If you want to learn more about them, you, they still exist here. And you can go just to Meridian Avenue between there's the uh, Indian uh, Health Center. And uh, things began to change, of course, with the, uh, the, the first European settlers that came here, this, which was the Spanish in 1777. And as part of the mission system, uh, Mission Santa Clara was uh, established in Santa Clara. And if you lived in this, the, the Willow Glen or the Willows areas, they referred to it, you would have attended uh, service on Sundays at uh, Mission Santa Clara. Uh, Willow Glen Methodist Church was established uh, in 1863, and they held services at the Willow Glen Public School, which lo was located on Lincoln, which was then referred to as El Abra and Malone Road. And they held uh, services there uh, for several years until they built their uh, first church uh, closer to uh, Minnesota. Many, many other churches followed. And as, as uh, of course, they didn't have the diversity that we have today, our choices of uh, religious or spiritual uh, facilities that we have today. And so they, as the population grew, new groups came here and met their needs. And it, they tried to meet the needs both the spiritual, the moral, um, the social, and to assist economically with their, with their uh, uh, members. So as, as we heard earlier speak that, that uh, the, the um, Sacred Heart Church was, was established to meet the needs of the, the growing Italian population that was in what they referred to then as Goose Town. Mm -hmm. And we see that in our diversity today, we see how it still continues to do that. We have the German church um, uh, on uh, Newport, we have a Chinese church and a Vietnamese church on Cottle Avenue. Many, there's many uh, re religious facilities sprinkled within the neighborhoods. Now, when did that start happening? Originally, m many of these religious groups would meet in the homes of people that were a part uh, of the followings, and, and, and then they needed more place for, for, to accommodate peop more people. There's a lot of uh, interesting buildings uh, that are part of, of churches, synagogues, what have you in the, in the local area. Um, a couple that I could talk to is there's, there's the, uh, the, the German church that's on, um, the German Christian church that's on Newport. And it is, if you see that building, some, one might think that must be the oldest church in Willow Glen because it's in the front is a, is a residence that dates back circa 1860s. And we find records that pastors have lived in that building since 1910. However, the German church didn't move there until the 1960s. They were originally uh, held services in a home on Grace Avenue, but they needed uh, more space for parking, as we discussed earlier, and they moved to that site. There's also, um, we earlier heard uh, about the uh, um, Croatian Roman Catholic Church. And some people have asked me about, geez, that, must, that looks like it's an adobe. It looks like a very old structure. It must be one of the earliest ones. And it's located across the street from the Roberto Adobe, which is historic. But that actually was, a, was uh, Marianne Garden's restaurant back in the 1950s and 60s. And when she passed away, she was, uh, uh, she was generous enough and left that site, her restaurant, to the Roman Catholic Church, and in, in, in 1975, it became the Roman Catholic Croatian Church. There's also been an evolution, uh, part of the history of, of uh, churches and other religious organizations in the area, is oftentimes they've shared sites. When they get started, as I mentioned, they may have held uh, services in someone's home or in a public facility like a school or a community center. And then in some cases, they may have shared. We have uh, documents, what we, many of us remember, the Alano Club, which was originally back in the 1920s built as a small store, but the, the, uh, Epis the Episcopalians held services there in the late 20s. And after they moved out, the Mormons moved in. And after the Mormons moved out, some Christian churches uh, held services there for a while before it became the Alano Club. Jim, are there any other interesting stories that you'd like to share with us? Well, there's one great story that goes back to 1951. 
It's a story about when St. Christopher's was trying to build a church. And uh, while the construction was going on, they first built the school. And they planned on holding mass in the uh, gymnasium. But until that was built, they held uh, services or held mass in a uh, prisoner's barn by the name of Joseph Costello. It was in the middle of his cherry orchard on Lincoln Avenue, uh, close to Houston. So they did that for quite a while while construction went on. So there's, there's a real evolution uh, here within Willow Glen. Jim, we want to thank you very much again for your time and your historical perspective on another issue here at Willow Glen in Motion. Thanks, Kevin. It was my pleasure, and I hope I haven't uh, offended or left out any groups uh, that I should have spoken about. Well, if you